I do enjoy magic. I really love working with the different uh, herbs, with gemstones, uh, with candles and colour and sigils and, and all sorts of things. Uh, it's fun. Magic is a lot of fun and it's a good way to connect to the earth, especially if you're working with uh, gemstones and working with uh, herbs. You actually are connecting physically with things of the earth, but it can get expensive. So in this video, I wanted to share with you how you can still practice Wicca and magic and spellcrafting without having to totally uh, blow your budget. But before I do, hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn Wicca or witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. Now, spell crafting is something that is very, very useful. It's very popular and it's something that just requires a little bit of knowledge of how to do. And I've got a PDF that is the Spellcaster Checklist that outlines for you the steps you need to take when you are crafting your own spells. Things to think about and to really, really think about uh, before you go and do your spell because there's, there's things you need to get straight in order to help your spell work become so much better. So do uh, grab that PDF, it's free. The link to that is in the description field below this video. So spells are fun and they certainly work. They don't necessarily work the way you want or think they're going to work. I certainly find that when it comes to magic, that you think it's probably going to work in a particular way or maybe you think in your head uh, this is this is the way it's going to work and you can't think of any other way it might work and then it works but in a really weird way <laughs> um, that's generally how it works it, it works in ways that you just can't fathom you know how did that all line up <laughs> it's it's fun the results of magic are fun and they're not always instant uh, sometimes magic can seriously take a longer time to work than you want it to and be because there's a lot of things that need to line up there's a lot of things you need to do and line up with as well uh, in order to be able to bring some magic into fruition so it is a quite uh, complicated thing and also very very simple now if you open any spell books or go online you'll find that uh, there are spells out there that require you to have a lot of different ingredients and these ingredients can be either very difficult to come by uh, and I know personally in Australia, a lot of the ingredients that are in a lot of traditional spells don't grow here naturally. They're even hard to grow and it's hard to even access uh, some of the, um, the seeds and that to get them growing. And some of them are illegal as well. So it's not always easy to either grow your own. You might be in a position where you can't even grow your own um, herbs. So it's, it's not easy to get specific herbs uh, to do specific spells that are in those spell books. And even working with gemstones, um, if you love gemstones and you get a book on spells with, with using gemstones, it can cost a fortune to buy gemstones. They can be hard to get if you're buying them online. You've got to make sure that they're, the, they're genuine, uh, that they're not just howlite that's been painted or dyed uh, or agate that's been dyed. It's tricky business. So what do you do? Learn about what the herbs that may be in a spell do, what the correspondences are. And you can find a lot of the correspondences in books and online. Um, Scott Cunningham's got a great book on uh, magical herbs. Uh, there's other books out there that specialize on herbs and you can actually look at what these herbs correspond to. And then have a look and see what's available at your local supermarket. I use herbs from the supermarket. I don't grow a lot. I don't um, live in a, a place where I can do a lot of growing. So I've only got some herbs growing in my garden, the ones that are easy to grow, uh, given the aspect of the garden. So I, I get a lot of my herbs simply from the supermarket. Dried herbs, sometimes grounded up from the supermarket, and they work just as well. Now, when you're substituting one herb for another herb, do look up and see what its other properties are because it will slightly change the flavor of the spell. In the same way that if you're cooking and you don't have a particular herb but you've got another one that's pretty similar, 
you're going to slightly alter the flavor of the meal. So the same thing with magic. Energetically, you're going to alter it slightly so that it's more the flavor of the substitute uh, than it would be totally with the ingredient that's on the list. It's a great opportunity for you to learn your herbs and to learn your correspondences. Uh, so if you really are interested in Wicca and witchcraft and really in practicing it, you're going to want to have knowledge about different correspondences and the specific herbs and what those specific specific herbs do in just to help you have more knowledge so that when you're doing spell crafting it takes you less time to actually know what to put in your spells. You can get away with using one herb if you're wanting to work with herbs. You don't even have to work with herbs. You can work with many different styles of magic. So if you do find that you're after a spell, you pick up a book, it's got a whole list of ingredients that you don't have that you can't get um, or if you do get them in via mail order, it's going to take a while for them to get to you. Then find another way of working that spell with either what you've got or some other means. So this is where you need to get creative with your, your magic. Spells don't, don't have to be about the ingredients. The ingredients help because they correspond to the different things that you want, they correspond to the planets, they correspond and, have, and resonate at certain frequencies. But we know from the law of attraction that you can do magic with no ingredients at all and it still works the same way, it still works. So as fun as magic is with all the herbs and the gemstones and the connecting with the earth from working with these things, if you don't have them don't go spending all of your money on obtaining them. You be creative and find another way to do your magic to get what it is that you're wanting. Be creative. It is a creative game. It's a creative craft. It's called a craft for a reason. So use herbs from the supermarket. Get familiar with what they do. Understand how it may alter your spell slightly and give it a more... Uh, cinnamon flavor for example than something else that you might be substituting cinnamon for and uh, get on with your spell work. Uh, if you don't even want to work with getting herbs from the supermarket learn sigil magic that just requires pen and paper or if you really love gemstones then as you're acquiring your gemstones over time just work with the ones that you've got and if you find that you're doing a spell and the gemstones that you've got don't really correspond with the work that you want to do then use something else again do some sigil magic or do some more um, some knot magic with colored um, cord a color magic is something that you can use which can be really really cheap on a budget you can get just get different colored yarn it doesn't actually matter what the yarn's made out of just get the different colored yarn and work with color magic and just do knot magic. Uh, you can do really simple uh, magic with candles. Candles can be quite easy to come by. You can make your own candles. Uh, candles can get expensive though. Uh, so especially if you're getting them via the mail, they, they can add up. I know when I was unemployed that it was expensive for me at the time buying candles because candles are my, probably my favorite type of magic. And yes, it can get expensive. So use your creativity. Don't let the fact you don't have the ingredients or you can't get the ingredients stop you from doing your magic. Get creative, go simple. It just means that when you're doing your magic, you're going to have to find within yourself more of an ability to be able to focus on what it is that you want as if it's already happened. You might need to maybe work, do more work with deities and or angels or other beings that you can work your spell magic with you know work with the elements work work with with beings such as deities that you don't have to spend money on <laughs> you know you don't have to pay a deity certainly you'll have offerings but offerings can be very very simple they can just be uh, incense they can be oils they can be really simple food like some biscuits or chocolate or honey or wine. Uh, it, they don't have to be expensive. So it doesn't have to get 
expensive. I guess that's really what I want to say. Because I know that particularly at this time um, when there's a lot of financial hardship due to all of the lockdowns that uh, it gets hard to do magic uh, and it can get expensive to do magic. So don't let that stop you from doing your practice. Learn what you can about magic and all of the different styles of magic out there. Don't be lazy. Don't just go and ask other people um, to give you a spell uh, to help you with something because they may be using uh, ingredients that you can't access uh, or they may be working with a type of magic that you don't resonate with. I mean, it's fine to ask friends and other coven members for different spells and things, but um, you know, try and do this learning yourself, do the research yourself and do courses in this stuff. Uh, in fact, doing courses is probably in the long run actually works out to be cheaper because you have the knowledge then to be able to create with what you have. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't spend a lot of money on magic. I just don't believe that I need to and I, I don't. It's not necessary. We know a lot more about the way that our subconscious works. We know a lot more about the way that magic works uh, from that law of attraction, uh, quantum physics side of things. And as great as it is to be able to have all of those ingredients and certainly use those ingredients and those ingredients will certainly help boost your spell in a particular way, there are other ways to go about doing it. Do download the Spellcaster checklist. That will get you clear about what you, how you can get clear yourself, which is probably one of the main things about spellcrafting is just getting clear in what you've got to think about and do before you cast a spell. So if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.